Good evening and welcome to the August uh, 2023 meeting of the Penfield Library Board of Trustees. Thank you for joining us. This is a public meeting and is being broadcasted on Penfield Public Broadcast and is available on YouTube after the meeting. Do I have a motion to adopt today's agenda? A motion. In the motion, second, second. Jason, all in favor? Perfect. I know, uh, Oop. Do I also have a motion to approve uh, the meeting minutes from last meeting? I motion. Jason. Second. Anna seconds. All in favor? Thank you. Um, Justin, I believe you're doing the re financial report. I sure am. Perfect. Uh, if we want to look at the balance sheet, we can look at a snapshot of our coming in on revenue and expenditures. Uh, as of August, our operating revenue balance is well within our approved budget. Uh, the Gifts Memorial Fund, uh, the current value is 138823 and it's largely unchanged from last month. Uh, August is the number seven month, which is about 58% of the year, so that's a good number to remember when uh, reviewing. Uh, the revenues portion, uh, the budget of 1.89 million was approved by the town and the actuals for the year are populated. Uh, we can look at other smaller revenue, revenue items such as copies, interest, income state, and state aid, but these are running uh, below the run rate. Uh, nothing to really to worry about. Uh, expense portions, uh, total actual expenses are coming in at 53% of the budget, which is fantastic because they were 58% through the year. Largest component of our budget, wages and salary, that's coming in at 56%, which is in line uh, year over year. Second largest controllable expenses and materials, that's coming in about 46%, which is highly favorable, or about 10% under what would be expected. Contractual expenses, uh, it's coming at 46%, and that's also about 10% where we would like it, so we're all favorable here. Uh, inclusion, it's been a, a great month. Our total expenses are coming in favorable. The budget, our wages are in line, and other major control materials uh, and contractuals are all favorable. Uh, revenue of copies, finance, interest, and state aid are coming significantly lower than budgeted. The largest revenue line item, property taxes, has been approved and has come through. Uh, two items that are gonna be uh, reviewed uh, probably next meeting when Naraj is back. We have two CDs uh, maturing in October and early November. Uh, okay. We will review those next meeting on whether or not we want to renew them or we want to withdraw them and put them into the gift and memorial fund. Okay. Perfect. Do we have a motion to approve that report? Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Um, moving on to the next item here, I do not see any public participation, but it is always welcome should anyone feel the need to come. Um, next item here is the liaison report. Linda's not here, so we will move on from that item as well. Uh, Judy, we'll go on to the Friends of the, uh, the Library liaison report. I, <clears throat> okay. um, I have not heard from the... Uh, from the friends, I think everybody's on vacation. <laughs> but um, I think the you know the the big event that's coming up in September is the is the sale, and uh, they're looking for people to work the sale. Even if you can work a half an hour, I think they would, you know, definitely appreciate it. So um, they always love to see the faces of board members. Um, so if you have a little bit of time to give one of those three or four days, I'm sure they would definitely appreciate it. So other Judy, than that, do you, I'm sorry, do you have contact information in case we want to do that? I do have contact information. I can send it to you. Well, okay. you can just go onto the website and you can sign up there. Okay. So okay. our website has a link to the friends website. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That's an easy it's easy to, to do it. electronically. You just it'll you'll see a whole calendar. And you can pick what time you want to go. Oh, perfect! Thank you. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no worries. Thank you so much, Judy. We'll move on to the committee reports. I know we, Justin, you just went over the finance reports. So I don't think there's anything additional you need to report there. Uh, nothing additional. Perfect. Uh, Anna, I know there's a personnel item yeah, here for an on-call substitute librarian. Uh, 
Rhonda, do you want to talk about her more? Kathleen or? Phillips has been with um, Monroe County Library System for many years. I've known her for a very long time. Um, we had trouble with um, filling shifts this summer, so we decided if we'd hire one more on-call sub. It doesn't cost our budgets anything because they just paid for the shifts that they work. Um, we're now up to nine on-call subs, which is a lot, but our we happen to have a group of people who are very active in their own lives, and they, they're they great librarians, but they say no a lot. So we, we needed another one. <laughs> so this is great. It's really good to have Kathleen on board. Are they paid <clears throat> a like a substitute salary kind of thing? Exactly. For every hour they work, they all get the same rate. So it doesn't really matter how many we have on the payroll. Right. Oh, neat. How many do we have? Now it's nine. Oh, nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you say that. How many times does that happen like a year? That we need a sub? Yeah. Um, kind of one, is it once well, every month? Or? Subs work every weekend, so Fridays and Saturdays we have them on. Um, in addition, I would say probably three times a month, four times a month. That's about it. Not a lot. Okay. I had no reference, so I appreciate right. that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Incredible. I'm looking forward to her joining the team. Do we need a motion to approve that? I was just, yeah. Yep. You um, do, right? Yes. Uh, motion to approve Kathleen Phillips as an on-call substitute librarian. Jennifer. And Judy seconds. All in favor? Perfect. <clears throat> uh, Jennifer, anything from the strategic planning? No. Okay. Uh, Justin, anything about the bylaws and policy? Any updates? Uh, yes, actually. The policy committee will be meeting tonight uh, with Rhonda to go over our Every three year, we do a policy review. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that, starting that process tonight, and by, probably by the next meeting, we'll have uh, things to approve. Awesome. Thank you so much. And we'll go on to the communications advocacy. Uh, Judy, anything to report there? Nope. Okay. We're good. Rhonda, we're off to the director's report. Great. Um, so, summer reading was a huge success, and we Really appreciate all that our staff puts into this project. Um, we, our numbers were large, our people were happy. The library was filled with children pretty much every day all summer. So it was really fantastic, really pleased with it. We had our first preschool summer reading club and it was very successful and people really enjoyed allowing those younger children to participate. So. Very good all around. Um, the Library of Things now has a sign above the shelf. And um, as I was typing this, 54% of the collection was checked out. Every time I look, it's over 50%, which is insanely good. I mean, no collection goes out that much. It's just nice. been really positive. Um, State Assembly Member Jennifer Lunsford came and visited the library, did a story time. We really appreciate that. And then she did a tour of the library and talked about what can be done in future projects. Very exciting. Um, we do have a contract with Struck and Sons to do the Brayman Room in mid-September after the Friends sale. Super exciting. Um, lots of meetings, some webinars. We are working on um, training for staff from a safety point, and we started with saving your back because so many of us are constantly lifting boxes or furniture and we had an injury this past month and so we had somebody come in to show us again how to lift <laughs> and uh, it's you know it's one of those things you just have to be reminded of over and over so we did that so that was great thank you to the town for allowing us to do that um, we um, are talking now to the town facilities and the town um, in administration and leadership about new carpeting and new paint within the actual fiscal year in 2023. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when I get to the budget discussion. And this Friday we are having a ribbon cutting. The Friday Club, which who are, it's a club that originated the library back in 1942. They have about 11, 12 members remaining, and but they are disbanding. and. Um, I think five or six of them are coming on Friday. They donated a little free library. So we have a little free library in front of the big free library now. So that anytime you come, you can always grab a book, even if we're closed. So we're going to um, take pictures and do a little speech. And the, little, the, the Friday Club members will um, be honored 
which nice. we, you know, we do appreciate all that they do. And since I wrote this, we did have the Marie Benedict um, lecture and book signing, and everything went very well. We had over 300 people. Um, one issue was that the streaming didn't work. We had about 65, 70 people in the waiting room to watch the stream, and it just didn't work. Um, something about the network. So I contacted Ms. Benedict, and she is allowing us to put a link on our website for one week, seven days, so that people can watch the recording. So that's going to start this Wednesday until the following, and um, we will publicize that as soon as we possibly can. Nice. We were just waiting for the link, which just came like an hour ago. So. <laughs> no worries. It's very exciting. Yeah. So um, you see everything else. Lots of lots of summer programs, like an amazing number of pro summer programs. But everything was good. Does anyone have any questions for Rhonda on the director's report? I'm wondering how does the um, I'm wondering how does the how do the um, the Library of Things come back? Are you missing puzzle? I mean, you don't even know, I guess, if you're missing puzzle pieces. There's a little slip of paper in the games and the puzzles. So far, we have games, puzzles, and hotspots. We're at that point. In another two months, we'll start adding other things. Um, so there's a little slip of paper that people can write, this puzzle is incomplete, or um, this game is incomplete. When that happens, you know, we will simply just, you know, we, we will get rid of it. We won't let it circulate because it's just not worth it. You know, right. These are inexpensive items. Right now, I have to say, probably a good half of the puzzle collection is made up of donations, because as soon as we started putting these out, people started bringing, bringing in their puzzles in great conditions, like, like almost new. So we are accepting all donations of games and puzzles, and, um, and I think that really kind of um, allows us to be, to be a little more forgiving when things come back and not go back and trace who lost that puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. we'll never, we won't do that. We don't, <laughs> we don't really care. This is just a service. Right. Yeah. I was just curious. Yeah, sure. And Jen, Lunds and Jen Lunsford, did she do a story presentation? She did. She, she did a story time for us with the children's librarians, yes. She did it in 2022 as well. So it's nice to have her come. Right. It's good support and it's a good resource. Yeah. <laughs> With the Library of Things, uh, have there been any requests from the public about particular items? Uh, we are getting requests. I th after, we, after we're done with the games and the puzzles, we're going to do the craft um, kits. That's our next step. But we have gotten recommendations for like microscopes and science equipment and tools and cake pans and interesting. Um, <laughs> A lot of interesting things, yeah. which we can't do everything. We just don't have the space. But um, we want to do a kind of an, an eclectic assortment of things to just make it interesting. Neat. Can you rotate them around, like take away the puzzles and put in something else that you don't have room for? I don't for? think we'll be able to because people are coming in for puzzles and games already, and we've only had them, what, like that. six weeks? It's insane how popular they are. People are coming in specifically for this. They're hearing about it and they're coming in. So I don't think it's going to be a rotating collection. I think we'll choose our items and, and then move on. Okay, just curious. <laughs> Rhonda, I yeah. just want to give you kudos. I was at the Marie Benedict thing and it, okay. it was just awesome. And really? the librarians were great and Marie Benedict was great. Thank and I was you. just so happy to hear that it's gonna happen next year too. So, yes. and thank, thank you, you to uh, Senator Brook for the grant. Yes, yes. That. So Senator Brook, I, I think I told you last month, but Senator Brook did say yes. She will do um, a 2024 grant for the libraries involved. It's a little less. It's it's 15,000. Um, so we're going to talk. The libraries will all talk and decide whether we're each going to do our own speaker or whether we're going to collaborate. Because, I mean, believe it or not, 15,000 isn't that much to get a you know a major author. So it might be a little hard to get somebody with a big name like Marie Benedict. So we'll see how it goes. What was the cost for? Maria Bendick? It was 13.5. 13.5. And she gave us a discount because she has family in town. Gotcha. But her, her original price was 20. Okay. And that's low, I think. Yeah. From what you, when you try to get, like, I don't know, you think of a James Patterson. They want like $75,000 to come, you know? I mean, I think since the pandemic, this has really grown and the prices have grown with it. Right. Yeah. All about an experience sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> How popular are you? Yeah. Hey, Rhonda, just yes. a question about the injury that you mentioned. Can mm -hmm. you share some details? Was it lost time? Was it 
do to there, um, there were two days violence? last time. It was a staff member who was setting up for a program, and she had. We have these folding tables, and she had somebody help her set it up, and they thought it was straight. And then she just wanted to move it a few inches, and when she pulled it with her, the legs had not locked. They didn't realize it, and she fell with it. Ooh. So um, yeah, a couple of days last time, wrist injury. All better now. Yeah, okay. she's good. Return. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, these things happen. We are constantly setting up, even though we have facility staff um, to help us, they're not always available. And very often we are just rushing between one program and another, and we just do it ourselves. And um, that's why it's important to just remind people to be careful. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, Any sure. further questions for Rhonda? We'll go on to uh, unfinished business here. We have the Ruth Brayman Room furniture proposal. So we do have a contract with Strzok and Sons and it is expected to begin mid-September. So it's time to start looking at the furniture that the board agreed but did not vote on back in December. And um, I originally had gotten the three quotes and you can see the original two, two of the three quotes right here. Um, this blue one is the link stacking chair and it is the most expensive that we have at 235 per chair. And if you look at it, I don't know if the camera will show, but it's a really sturdy chair. It's plastic on the bottom. But, and it's gorgeous, and it's wide. And it's, it's heavy. Comfortable. <laughs> and you all can come and sit. It's just so heavy. Oh. Honestly, it's just too heavy for us. And that would stack, though, too, correct? It, they only, the fabric chairs stack five, six, maybe seven tops. That's so, heavy to pick up. Yeah. It's yeah. And top, and put it's on top of five of them. Now this one is called the Rio stacking chair. And I've asked for cushions, um, fabric cushions. This is like a leatherette kind of vinyl. It comes in a lot of colors. It is lighter than this one. But we found that we didn't love this, the arms. And my personal opinion is that it's a little too modern looking for our building. But come and sit on it and you know, let us know what you think. The third of the three is basically the same as our chairs here in this room, but the company that the town uses to purchase them, they're a priority vendor, which means they're on state contract, but they're priority because they use employees who are um, perhaps disabled or incarcerated, or they, they get priority status with the state. The chair is no longer being offered. Um. And they don't have another one with a cushion and arms. And That's I really think I we like. need a cushion and arms. So I have to go shopping. But if you look on the other side of the form I just gave you, I contacted the salesperson for this first chair, which we love, but it was too heavy. And I asked for some lighter chairs. So I don't have the actual chairs today, but I have prices and pictures. So the first one is the shuttle. So she said it's lighter than the link, but it's very sturdy. And that comes out to 192 still pretty expensive. And then the other option is the Clary, still lighter than the shuttle, but not as sturdy. And it's, what, like $7 less. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think, honestly, it would be great if we can take, pick a number, and then you just give me time to find more samples. And I, I don't really want, if we find something perfect, I prefer not to wait for our next meeting and just go ahead and buy it, because usually there's a six to eight week lead time. So if we have a budget and the board approves the budget for the Gift of Memorial Fund, then I can just continue. And I would certainly, of course, email you everything and let you know, but we wouldn't have an official vote. So if we can officially vote tonight, that would be great. But the tables, um, I can't bring a table in, but the, the table that we would love, love, love is a very expensive table. I'm letting you know right off the bat. It's more expensive because we would never have an injury like we just had this week because they stay upright. Um, you don't have to pull them out and pull out legs. They're, right. they're pir pirouette tables, so the top just turns over and then they nest on the side of the room. And they're on wheels and they're heavy and they're strong. And I've seen them at Henrietta Library and one other library, I'm not sure which one, maybe Chai Lai. And they're, they're just, they're beautiful. So you can get any laminate you want. So they look like they're wood. That's what I have in my school. Do I you? Mm -hmm. And what do you really, think? Oh, they're so easy. Yeah. They're, they are, they're steady because the, the wheels, even though they're on wheels to make them easy to move over, but the wheels all lock. Mm -hmm. So they're completely sturdy. And 
Um, I would suggest if we if you go in this we go this route to go with a little bit darker. Okay. Um, if that's okay with yes. the rest of the because they really do um, pick up like that light. I have that light color, mm -hmm. and they it picks up everything. So you, you know, and you can and and you have to scrub to get them off. But um, so the other ones, even the middle one there, the the wood one, if it goes with the decor, it would be nice to have something a little darker. But they're wonderful. Very Good. convenient. I mean, I did tell the staff that we would save a lot of our old chairs and tables anyway in storage and bring them out for the craftier programs oh. so that we don't... Or cover with butcher black paper or something. We could do that also. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes, yeah. So are we okay with saying for chairs spend up to 25000 I think it's more like thirty. Is thirty okay? perfect? Yeah. Depending on which chair, I, and I will search for a less expensive chair. Honestly, I think this is a little high. The reason it's so high is the estimate comes for a hundred chairs, which is what the goal is. We don't have to do a hundred though. If you want me to do seventy or seventy-five, we could do that and save twenty-five plastic chairs. We'd be fine for the most part. We don't use a hundred chairs for every program, so that's really an option. It would just make sense. I mean, we have the Bramer room. We're getting ready to, you know, have it remodeled. Doesn't make sense to have mismatching furniture, okay. you know, in okay. there. So, so let's just do so a full hundred chairs. And great. Are, so this estimate is a hundred, hundred chairs. And then they charge a pretty large amount. It was almost like eighteen hundred dollars for them to come in and assemble them. And I don't know what it means to assemble a chair. I, I mm -hmm. have to find out more because we might be able to go without that. We have facility staff who can bring them in. I, I, I imagine they're put together, so I don't know what that assembly meant. So I have to find out. And then we did buy the carts to stack them on, which I do think we kind of need. So mm -hmm. we might be able to lower that price a bit. But if you if you if you vote for thirty thousand, then there's no question about coming back to the board for another vote, and I and it will most likely be much less. Perfect, Anna. You're going to say something. Yeah, I was just going to ask what the capacity of the Ruth Brahman room. It's a hundred. It's a hundred. Okay. okay. So that would be real tight. We've done it many, many times. It's a little tight, um, but that's what it is. And Perfect. I mean, that's what we're legally allowed, so mm -hmm. right. uh, I'd say let's do the 100 chairs. Is everyone okay giving a round of the budget of up to 30000 to spend? Does the 30000 include the chair or the tables? Or do you need? Okay. And how many tables are you looking at? We're looking at 10 tables. But I can lower that too if you prefer. We usually typically, you know, when we do a big L, ah. we, we, we yeah. do use 10. And um, I know, Judy, you've come to the volunteer luncheon. That's 10 tables. Right. Um, it's nice when they match. But it doesn't have to be. I know they're expensive. So this is, you know, we can discuss. How long do you think the tables and chairs last? Well, these last ones, which were not very good, lasted, what, like 40 years? <laughs> <laughs> so even if you round down, you still think it's all right? Uh, I think that's what makes the purchase um, worthwhile, right? After you're saying, hey, it, it'll be good for 30, 40 years. All right. Absolutely. Um, do, Ron, we have, just, oops, oh, do we have a place to store them? Well, that's part of the renovation. The projection, what was formerly the projection room in the um, Ruth Raymond room will yeah. be a storage room. Oh, okay. So I think the, the stack tables will stay on the side because I think I don't think it'll be able to get in that room, but the chairs and everything can go in there. Okay. So, for example, on the front part you have <coughs> for the heavier chair, total of 27,000. 538. Right. That's just for the chair quote, or does that include the tables you want as well? That's just chairs. Okay. Um, with them bringing it in and installing it, whatever that means. Yep. Um, yeah. I just want to make sure you have a, a budget enough. Right. The for tables were about 10,000. So okay. that's why I'm saying about 30,000. Something's oh, not right. 40,000. 40, yeah. 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 So let's that's do my math. Thank you. <laughs> let's do up to. <laughs> 40,000, yeah. everyone okay with that? Thank yes. you, oh my god. Do gosh. I have a motion to I'll make that motion. Jason, do I have a second? I'll second. Jennifer seconds, all in favor? Awesome, yeah, Rhonda. So Thank I you for catching that, oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back to us, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All and right. that comes out of the Gift of Memorial Fund, which you just saw that we have a healthy budget. We, we, yeah. we very much do have a healthy budget in the Gift of Memorial Fund. We do want to keep it above 100,000, that mm -hmm. is, like our floor, but we do have a couple of CDs maturing. And like I said, in the next uh, two months, we have two CDs maturing that, we'll, that we can put into. And just so everyone's aware, how much do we have in that uh, account right now, roughly? Uh, the Gift and Memorial Fund current value is 138,823. Okay. Uh, total value with the CDs is 160. 
So plenty enough to cover what we want mm -hmm. to do. Okay. And we were told before, I believe from uh, Tony, yeah. that we wanted to spend that down a little bit, uh, so it wasn't including future. Yeah, we might want to relook at the 100,000 floor because, um, well, I, I, for the new members, um, the Gifted Memorial Fund is um, a fund that was established many, many years ago for donations, but when we became a municipal library, it becomes municipal money. And the truth is that that money, although it is right now controlled by the board. It is actually owned by the town, and they can claw it back. It. Oh. It's been the recommendation, as I remember in the past, that we spend down some of that money. Yes. Yeah, and I thought we voted at one point to lower the threshold from 100. No, it was higher, and oh, they lowered it to 100 that's what it just was. before yes. I, be I became director. But even that's a little high. Yeah, I, I would be totally comfortable cutting that in half. Like 50? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can we add that just, to just the to agenda sure. for, do we need to add that to the agenda for next meeting? Can we? We can, um, okay. but I think we should have a project in mind before. And I think what I would love to do with some of that money is if we get the new paint and the carpet for the entire library, it would be, um, I think, a good idea to reupholster all of the soft furniture to go with the new color scheme. And um, that's what I was hoping we might spend some of that funding on. Perfect. I, is I think that furniture in good enough condition to do that too? That is the same furniture that we had inspected when we did the children's room. Oh, when we and did that the children's company children. said yes. Okay. Um, before we go ahead and do all of the uh, all of it, I think I'd bring in a second company and make sure that that's still true. And that's because right. the wood that was used to create that furniture was of much higher quality than what Probably. was used for yeah. newer furniture. Hmm. Okay. It's time. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. We'll go on to the 2024 budget proposal update, Rhonda. Right. So um, the town supervisor and the town comptroller met, met with the town board to talk about our 2024 budget proposal. Um, and this is what they have come back with. In 2023, they did take $90,000 from our unallocated fund balance, which is what's left at the end of each year, just keeps piling up, owned by the library, has to, cannot be spent without library approval, but still town money. Um, so in 2023, they did take $90,000. They're asking to take the same amount for 2024. So do you see under revenue the $90,000 at the bottom? Mm -hmm. That's our unallocated fund balance. Um, between that, and what we need, what we've asked for, is $45,000 that the town board will agree to pay. Um, and, and that's fine. So they, they are happy with this. Well, I don't know if they're happy, but they've agreed to accept this budget if we allow them to take the $90,000 out of the unallocated fund balance. Honestly, there's no real choice here because if we keep everybody employed and we keep, we didn't really raise anything. We, everything was pretty much static. Yeah. Um, we gave a cost of living increase to the staff, but we kept our materials lines solid and um, all of our costs were, stayed the same pretty much. The most increase is coming from the personnel okay. and we have to keep up with it. And then of course, remember we lost a great deal of revenue when we canceled the children's and YA fines. So, which we also have to talk about in the next few months about what are we going to do about a doll. We had said we'd talk about that. So we might lose even more um, revenue. But um, that we had in the original proposal that you accepted and voted on, we had put in $100,000 for carpet and paint. The town has been doing research and they think it's going to cost well over $200,000. Mm. And they will take that out of our unallocated fund balance as well as the 90,000 but the threshold will be 225,000 and anything above that they will pay it's not in the budget because they're hoping to do that project in 2023 and um, if they can get the, the bids in if they can um, encumber the funding in 2023 then um, we don't actually have to do the project in 2023, but at least it's a, def a definitive project that nobody can take away from us. Perfect. So what are they doing with this 90,000? I guess I'm a little confused. That's just the difference between um, what we're asking for and what we've always gotten. 
we haven't stretched our budget too far though. I know. So we don't we don't want to do that. I know. So I, I know we want to have those outstanding four star, five star considerations that we make with the town, but we also want to take care of, you know, who we're taking care of. At the end of 2023, at the end of, we're in 2023, at the end of 2022, we had in our fund balance $682,000, which is a substantial amount to have. A lot. Um, so the, the town board feels that we need to use that first. Okay. So after we take out what we're projecting to take out, what would be the balance after that? If you if you look at the 682, and if they if they spend 225 from that, mm -hmm. and then another 90 for the budget, I need my phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 315 wow. minus 684. 682 minus 225. Yeah, 682 minus 225 minus 90. But remember, at the end of every fiscal year, we add to that balance. It's, yeah, and this balance no way, has been built I mean, up I'm for... I'm too conservative. This board is too conservative for us to ever spend out a budget. We're never going to come out with $5 in the... In the <laughs> it's not going to happen. We're going to have a substantial and, amount of money at the end of this year as well to add into that. And this budget and of, or this fund or this slash fund of 682 has been a culmination of many, many years. Right. Uh, so by us delaying you know, just basic upkeep of carpet and paint for the last, you know, 15, 20 years, it's kind of, you got to pay the piper at this point. Um, right. But lowering it from, you know, 682 to 267, not a bad thing with a major uh, project like the uh, yeah. flooring. Right. Yeah. So 367 was still good. Yeah. I mean, I've been at some libraries that felt that we had 100% of the budget, which was really hard to have. Yeah. Um, and I've been at some libraries that thought like 25% was enough, you know, and they kept it at that. So we're, we're kind of in the middle here. Um, I, I think the town is being, my personal opinion based on my three library directorships, I think the town is being fair. I mean, it's just really hard to keep up with the cost of living um, year after year after year if you're not going to raise taxes. Yeah. What do you think? I'm good with that. I, I think the horse trading that happens with the town board is fine, right? Uh, it's not cutting back anything that we're planning to do. They didn't say, hey, we want you to do less. They're saying, hey, you have a nice sum there and share. Like, okay, we can share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. No, I, I think agree. that's perfect. We're getting um, you know, some of the things that are just needed to maintain a nice presence at the library. Mm -hmm. um, so I think this is a step in the right direction uh, until we figure out you know, longer term solutions uh, for our facility. I mean, there's no vote or anything needs to happen on this. If we right. say no, honestly, the, the projects won't get done. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's I, going to it's, happen. It's much more important that these these projects get done. Anecdotally, everyone who I speak to, who uses the library, and ch maybe chooses to use Fairport or Pittsford, it's it's due to the mostly to the condition of our library. It's just it's not. It's it's just it's just old and dingy. Yeah, a fresh coat of paint. <laughs> Fresh, fresh furniture, like this, a facelift will would help so much, and just the an R forward facing uh, towards the public. A facelift is well beyond needed at this point. I agree. Right, and if we don't do any facelift, if we just consider continue to let um, the condition of the building get worse and worse. And then we come back in five years and say we need a new building. I, I think we will have lost too much support mm -hmm. by then. Absolutely. You know, people will have already found their other libraries and not want to put money into it because we don't take care of our building. Why would they want to invest in our building? We have to take mm -hmm. care of it. No, no, absolutely. Um, you said we need a vote on this, correct? Or Yes, okay. yes. Do I have a motion to? No, actually we don't because we don't. we've already, both. Yeah. we don't need it. They, they came back with it. Should we? Let's take a vote just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept the, you know, the terms here with the town? I motion to accept. Just second that. Second. Jason, all in favor? Perfect. No other questions about it? I, cause, Oops, because sorry. I can go back to Barbara Trudeau if you have questions and come back to you with answers that, if you have anything more that's... <clears throat> okay. If you think of anything, you can always email me and I can find out. 
Uh, on to new business, looks like, uh, Rhonda, you want to bring up Sunday, uh, December 31st, library hours? Right, so according to the employee manual, we close at 2 p.m. on um, December thir 31st, which is a Sunday, we open at 1 p.m. <laughs> So do you want staff to come in for the one hour, or can we just give them the day off? Can we just give them the, the day, day off? The day off. <laughs> they don't that, get that many yeah. days off. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. So can we have a vote for that? Yeah, let's get a vote on that. Yeah. Do I have a motion I'll to motion. approve? Jennifer? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. They will Welcome. appreciate it. All right, and then uh, we have the little free library uh, ribbon cutting ceremony. Which we talked about. Yes. So that's tomorrow, Friday at 2, and um, we have people coming and we'll take pictures. And if you have time, I know Jason, you said yes. I think you, is anybody else who said yes? Judy, you said yes. Um, it's just going to be fun and, and lovely. So please come if you can, but if you can't, we totally understand. We'll take pictures and put them on social media and you'll see it there. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, on to the claims payment. I wasn't here last week, so I don't know who is doing claims this month. Sorry. I did, oh, <clears throat> Judy? I did August, yes. <laughs> Um, so I'd like to put forth a motion to approve the vouchers of $32,642.71. I have a I'll motion second. to approve. Perfect. All in favor? And then it looks like, I believe, Jennifer, you're next. Sounds good. All right. And then from there, um, <clears throat> I don't think we have anything else. Do I have a uh, motion to adjourn this meeting? I'll make that motion. Jason first and second. All in favor? <laughs> Perfect. We'll adjourn.